hello everyone. So, we will continue with the electrostatic spray coating. So, today we will discuss the optimization process of the system which we have seen in last class the fabrication of that system. So, here what we will discuss today so effect of different process parameters. So, the different process parameters we can vary in that instrument and those factors affect the the resin weight fraction. So, how the take off of the resin that we can uh, vary the effect of different parameters that I will just discuss on the ready resin fraction we will see here the process parameters are the electrostatic voltage this we can vary. So, here the electrostatic voltage is varied from 10 kilo volt to 80 kilo volt. Then we can vary the conveying air pressure. So, in our study it has the range from 0.5 bar to 2.5 bar. Other variable is tow velocity. So, with the change in tow velocity that is the take off uh, speed the resin content changes. So, here the tow velocity was varied from 1 meter per minute to 5 meter per minute. Distance of gun from the tow which is very important. So, that affect the again the volume fraction of the carbon fiber that is the matrix content we can vary. Then fluidization pressure it affect the, the proper formation of cloud that also affect ultimately the resin content. So, all these factors affect the polypropylene powder deposition on the carbon tow. So, here what we have done here we have changed one parameter at a time keeping all other parameters constant okay, and to investigate the amount of powder deposited on the carbon tow and the, that is called resin weight fraction and this is done by measuring the weight of the carbon tow before deposition and after deposition that will give us the indication of the resin weight fraction the carbon fiber as I have mentioned it is we have used the 7 micron diameter carbon fiber and cryogenically uh, ground PP powder. So, here one parameter at a time we have varied. Now, these are the different parameters we have used. So, here in first experiment what we have done here powder deposition versus corona charge. So, here corona charge was varied from 30 to 80 kilo volt and rest other parameters like fluidizing pressure, conveying air pressure, gun distance and tow velocity were kept constant. Similarly, in the second experiment what we have done 
powder deposition versus conveying air pressure. Conveying air pressure was changed from 0.5 to 2.5 bar, where the voltage corona voltage it is kept at 30 kilo volt and other parameters were kept constant. In the third experiment what we have done we have changed the fluidizing pressure from 0.5 to 1.5 bar with the voltage here we kept 70 kilo volt and also other parameters were kept constant. Similarly, in fourth experiment gun distance was changed from 25 to 125 millimeter that gun distance from the toe that distance was changed and in fifth experiment what we have done it is a toe velocity was changed from 1 meter per minute to 5 meter per minute keeping all other parameters same where voltage was kept at 50 kilo volt. This was the setup experimental setup. Now, in the first experiment was done with voltage was changed the corona voltage was changed and what we have observed with the increase in voltage initially there is a very sharp increase in the resin weight fraction from say 0 0.225 to 0.4 and after that say after reaching 15 50 kilo volt it is almost stabilized. So, after 50 kilo volt the resin fraction is stabilized there is no further increase in the resin weight fraction. The reason behind this is that the change in the amount of polypropylene powder deposited onto unsprayed carbon toe as a function of variation in electrostatic voltage from 10 to 80 kilo volt was there when other parameters were kept constant. So, at very low corona voltage from 10 to 20 the powder particle does not acquire any charge. So, that there is no deposition ok, inconsistent deposition was there, there is no charge was there. So, non charging of powder particles at low electrostatic voltage can be attributed to non ionization of air at this voltage ok. So, that is why up to 20 there was no such uh, deposition with further increase of voltage from 30 to 50 kilo volt the resin weight fraction is found to increase drastically as I have mentioned with the in which can be assigned to ionization of air ok in the vicinity of the high voltage electrode at the nozzle exit point and that helps in that attraction of the particles by the carbon toe. So, as soon as the powder particles move in the ionized air zone the ionized air molecules bombard the charge to the powder particles thereby charging them ok and directing them to the grounded highly conductive carbon toe. So, that will automatically deposited on the carbon toe, but with further increase because at that at 50 kilo volt it has already got saturated. So, with further increase in electrostatic voltage from
from 60 kilo volt to 80 kilo volt the resin weight fraction is found to be fairly consistent there is no change. Once the powder particle reach their saturation limit as a result of increase in corona voltage the increase in corona voltage further does not help. So, we can say around 60 50 between 50 to 60 is the optimum the voltage which we can use here. The next experiment is that effect of conveying air pressure on powder deposition. Here we can see as we increase the conveying air pressure from 0.5 to 1.5 there is a sharp increase in the resin deposition. But once it is more than 1.5 bar, so it there is a sudden drop in the powder deposition. So, this is attributed due to the fact that the change in resin weight fraction upon varying air pressure it is basically due to the fact that as we increase the pressure the powder deposition is found to increase up to the 1.5 bar and beyond that significant decrease. The increase in powder velocity leads to overcome the image force by the powder particle which is responsible for adhering the powder particle to the grounded carbon. So, initially the powder the conveying force was required here. So, that forces that power the along with the voltage the powder requires some velocity the some speed. So, that with that speed the powder that with the pressure with that pressure the powder uh, moves towards the carbon toe, but if we increase further beyond 1.5 bar then it will try to overcome the image force by the powder particle. So, that here if it comes powder comes at very high speed high pressure then the adhering force it will overcome the adhering force and powder will move beyond that will be separated. So, in addition to that further increase in air velocity leads to falling off of the already deposited powder particle. So, if we increase the air pressure here, so already formed particles were there and then air pressure if we increase conveying air pressure, then already formed particle deposit particle will get separated. So, this will effectively leads to decrease in the resin weight fraction. So, initially we need some air pressure to help in deposition, but if it is beyond certain level here level is 1.5 bar in that case what will happen it will overcome the image force which helps in attraction plus the already deposited particles would get separated. So, the falling off is actually further continues with the above 2.5 bar. So, there will be shaking action beyond 2.5 bar pressure. So, there will be uh, there will be very less 
resin deposition. Okay. So, at higher pressure due to increase in exit velocity of powder, it is observed that the pointed electrode responsible for generation of corona it is clogged with the powder particle. So, at higher pressure it uh, gets clogged this clogging of electrode can affect the charge acquisition by the powder particle. So, this also it affects the uh, charging of uh, if it clogs then charging will be uh, will not be proper. So, all these parameters this is responsible they are responsible for reduction in resin deposition beyond certain level of conveying pressure. And our next experiment was the distance between gun point effect of distance between gun point and uh, gun tip and toe with the powdered deposition. So, this is the toe and here it is a gun tip. So, this distance we have changed the what we have observed initially it increases if we reduce the distance the deposition is reduced and with the increase in distance it deposition is increases up to say 50 millimeter and beyond that if we further increase the distance the resin deposition drops drastically. So, from 25 to 100 we have observed here. So, it has been reported in the literature that the electrostatic force is strongest at the short distance. Okay. So, this is the it is strongest at lower distance. So, it was expected that the powder deposition will be maximum at closest point say, say 25 millimeter. So, at that point it was expected that the charging as the charging is maximum. So, powder deposition should have been a maximum, but what we have observed at lower if we reduce the distance from 50 mm. So, gradually the deposition reduces and where that is why we have got a contradictory uh, result. The optimum value what we have got is 50 mm. So, as the distance is lowered from 50 mm the weight fraction is found to decrease at the closest setting though the electric field is maximum okay it's our strongest lower powder deposition can be attributed to the the size of the particle so at that particle the powder that at that size lower distance the size of particle is little bit larger so it gets it has got very high inertia at that inertia it if it strikes the toe it will immediately bounce back or it will not be sticking to the surface it will reflect because at lower distance the inertia is very high. So, powder particles 2520 5, micron. So, at high air pressure which imparts at higher inertia at lower distance as I have mentioned. So, this may overcome the effect of electric high electric voltage. So, that is why it gives lower weight fraction in this zone 
if we reduce this. But beyond certain distance like 50 mm, if we increase the distance, then the effect that charging effect dominates. So, lower charging will be dominating and which will ultimately affect the resin deposition. So, here in this zone the reduction is due to the electric charge and in the left zone reduction is due to the, the inertia. Next is the fluidizing pressure, we have changed here fluidizing pressure from 0.5 bar to 1.5 bar and the diagram shows that it is constantly consistently reducing initially at the lower rate and after that it is at higher rate. The resin fraction reduces consistently. So, other parameters were kept constant. When the fluidizing pressure is kept 0, so there is no uh, powder generation. So, powder deposition is found to be uh, negligible. So, that is why we have not taken that part. With the increase in fluidizing pressure, powder deposition should so, sharp fall okay. in the weight fraction, the maximum powder deposition is at 0.5 bar. At a fluidizing pressure of 0.5 bar, the powder particles are set to set in the relative motion, which that relative motion with each other which helps in conveying of powder and up to the toe. The set in relative motion with each other and the fluidized bed resembles lightly boiling liquid. The density of fluidized bed is found to reduce there is a significant increase in height of powder bed. So, that powder bed height will increase that will affect the deposition. Okay. So, that at this condition when the force of cohesion and gravitation between the powder particles are overcome by the upward movement of fluidizing here. So, at that at point 0.5 bar pressure these things happen. Okay. So, this vacuum created by the flowing air which helps in sucking the powder okay, particles. At high pressure, so 1 and 1.5 bar, the fluidization of powder particles found to be violent. So, that violent nature is not actually the it is not uh, required and due to this violent nature the powder behaves erratically the clogging may take place which results in reduction in the resin weight fraction. So, for proper deposition we need proper cloud formation it is not that the particle should move violently, there should be smooth light movement should be there. Okay. Next experiment was the effect of tow speed on powder deposition. The difference in resin weight fraction we can see with the increase in take up speed it consistently reducing which is basically uh, we, we can be explained by uh, the residence time. If we increase the residence time, then residence time in the chamber, this is the jet 
gun powder is if the residence time is more that means more and more powder will get deposited on the sun. If the residence time is less the less time will be available. So, powder deposition will be less. So, it is very simple. So, if we increase the speed increase the speed residence time is less. So, less powder will get deposited. So, it is a decrease uh, resin weight fraction found to be decreased with the increase in velocity. The time available for powder deposition decreases. So, that is why the weight fraction reduces. So, in one factor at a time approach, so here what we have done? we have changed one parameter and keep kept other parameters constant. Okay. So, in this approach we have done other experiments also. So, we have changed the oven temperature and we have studied the flexural rigidity of the toe break. So, flexural rigidity is a function of fiber volume fraction and oven temperature. So, these two parameters we have changed so, one at a time. So, two different fiber volume fractions were taken 50 percent and 60 percent. So, 60 percent fiber volume fraction means 40 percent is the resin weight fraction. So, 0.4 is the resin resin weight fraction here and three different oven temperatures were taken 180 degree Celsius, 200 and 220 degree Celsius. And we have tested the flexural rigidity by Sarli weighted ring yarn stiffness tester. And scanning electron microscope images were taken this is the picture of the Sarli stiffness tester and scanning electron microscope image of the toe preg is there it is 180 degree Celsius we can see here the powders are not melted properly and uh, it is not deposited evenly, but here at 200 degree Celsius this is melted and at uh, further if we can see it is a, a melted and the thickness here at that at 220 degree Celsius thickness of the the coating is less than 200 degree Celsius, which means that it has melted and penetrated inside the carbon fiber, carbon filament. Okay. So, effect of oven temperature on flexural rigidity, if we see. So, as we have mentioned here, the scanning electron microscope picture with the fiber volume fraction 50 percent here. Okay. It can be seen here that for the chosen process parameters to achieve the fiber volume fraction 50 percent, the temperature of 180 degrees led to inadequate melting of the particle. So, inadequate melting of the particle. So, no adherence of PP matrix to the carbon toe was observed which led to peeling of powder from. The, so, it, it gets peeled off we can see it is very clearly the powder gets peeled off. So, and also the PP powder is not deposited uniformly on both sides. So, here and 
both sides of the carbon toe. It is not uniform because of the improper melting of the polypropylene. And in figure B, this is the figure B which is at temperature 200 degree Celsius, powdered particles melted okay, properly and interdiffusion of powder particles were there which prevents it fall off, okay. interdiffusion is there and at 220 degree Celsius the degree of melting is very high and the reduce reduction in thickness as I have already mentioned. Okay. So, we can see here the powder deposition, it is improper powder deposition is there, it is peeled off at 60, deg 60 percent volume fraction and at 60 percent volume fraction, so uh, fiber volume is more than uh, more, it is severe and at 80, uh, 180 degree Celsius the effect is much more severe than 50 percent. At 50 percent the fraying of the this carbon filaments were not there, but at 60 percent uh, volume fraction that means uh, the polypropylene coating was 40 percent. So, at lower volume fraction of the polypropylene it was much more severe. So, if you see the effect of oven temperature on flexural rigidity, flexural rigidity increases with the increase in oven temperature. And this is true for both 50 percent fiber volume fraction and 60 percent volume fraction. So, there is a consistent increase in flexural rigidity okay. and both 50 percent and 60 percent we have observed. So, if there is an increase at lower temperature 180 degrees Celsius, the powder particles do not melt appropriately. <coughs> so, what happens if it does not melt, then there will be relative motion between the filament. So, there is no coating, proper coating. So, there is a fiber, these are the particles. So, there will be relative motion between the filaments thereby it is not restricted, the movement is not restricted. So, toe exhibits lower flexural rigidity, but at higher temperature what happened? This particles gets melted, covered as we have seen in the scanning electron microscope photograph and due to this it the bending rigidity, flexural rigidity increases. Okay. It further increases as the temperature goes up to 220 degree Celsius because at that stage in addition to the surface melt, melting presence, the, the polypropylene matrix penetrates inside the, uh, the carbon toe. So, that helps in enhancing the flexural rigidity. The flexural rigidity is found to be lower in case of 60 percent volume fraction. So, 60 percent volume fraction this is the 60 percent it is lower because here the polypropylene which is responsible for enhancing the uh, flexural rigidity, the content of polypropylene is lower. 
So, 60 percent fiber volume means 40 percent is PP, here 50 percent PP. So, with due to lower quantity of polypropylene, so that here the flexural rigidity of 60 percent volume fraction is lower than the 50 percent volume fraction. After that we have done the uh, response surface model. So, three variables at a time we have used. So, it helps in understanding or mapping a region of response surface and which uh, ultimately helps in optimizing the parameter. Response surface equation model how changes in variables are affect, affect a response of interest. Okay. So, that is a response surface model. So, we have taken a three variable response, so, we have used a box and banken model most widely used system. Now, here the three variables are voltage, gun distance and tow velocity. These parameters we have seen earlier one at a time, but here in combination we have changed the voltage with the lower value is 30 and higher level is 70 kilo volt, gun distance from 40 to 120 millimeter and tow velocity from 1.5 meter per minute to 6.5 meter per minute and in between at the center value we have taken like here it is a 40, 30, 30, 50 and 50 kilo volt. So, middle value we have taken as a third level, so 0 level. So, this is minus 1, plus 1 and 0 level we have used and the total combination of the parameters are there, there are total 15 experiment set of experiments. Now, we can see here the same trend we have got earlier for single variable testing, single variable experiment, but here we will get the total response surface. So, if we see here the tow velocity with the increase in tow velocity the fiber volume fraction increases means earlier what we have seen with the increase in tow velocity the resin fraction reduces it is same it is with the increase in fiber tow velocity fiber volume fraction increases that means it is a reduction in resin content. Okay. But the advantage of this response surface means we can get within this experimental zone the rate the trend of the parameter at different level like at 30 voltage 30 voltage the rate of change of say volume fraction with the increase in tow velocity is higher than at the at 70 kilo volt at the 70 kilo volt if we keep the voltage here and we change the tow velocity here the rate of increase in fiber volume fraction is lower similarly if we see here at higher level of tow velocity the effect of voltage okay effect of charging is higher than its prominent 
it is significant, but at lower level of tow velocity the charge effect is not that significant, it is almost a almost horizontal ok, there is no change. So, here by having the response surface equation we can get the trend total trend of experiments or uh, of the parameters in this experimental zone. So, similarly here this response surface shows the effect of tow velocity and gun distance on fiber volume fraction. So, this it is uh, it is showing like with the as we increase the gun distance here it is changing. So, we can do this we can uh, optimize the parameters depending on our use. Now, what we have seen in our experimental setup we can optimize the parameters. We have seen the different uh, factors which affect the uh, resin content. Now, we will see the influence of various forms of polypropylene matrix on flexural strength of carbon polypropylene composite. Now, we will come to the composite making. So, the matrix formation here, the polypropylene matrix are in the form of fiber, in the form of powder and in the form of film. So, when we will use the fiber, we will form the hybrid yarn. hybrid yarn will uh, form. So, fiber and hybrid yarn we have to form. So, polypropylene fiber you have to use and carbon tow we have to use. So, in this case polypropylene staple fiber we will use. So, for that what we have done we have used the drape friction spinning, where polypropylene fiber staple fibers were taken and polypropylene staple fibers were wrapped around the carbon filament and powder we will be using the, ex, the whatever we have explained the powder coating system is used and film stacking will take the polypropylene film and the stacking will be done. So, this is the carbon filament and polypropylene will be stacked on that in this fashion. So, that is how we will uh, uh, we'll see and this, this three type different types of structure how this structure affect the flexural property of the composite. So, electrostatic spray coating when we will use uh, as a powder, drapes free spinning when we will as a polypropylene uh, matrix as a fiber and film stacking as film method. Okay. Composite laminate process. So, we will make the composite laminate proper make uh, laminate. So, the total plan of work is that first uh, drape spinning we have we will be doing for uh, using a fiber as a fiber polypropylene as a fiber film static film stacking and powder coating the drape spun hybridian powder coated trope rig then uh, film stacking will be done. So, film stacking on the directly on the carbon tow, then we will form the laminate okay, and laminate of drape span yarn, film stacked laminate and lamination 
from the toe freak, powder coated toe freak. Then compression molding will be done to form the composite. So, from drape we will make the unidirectional composite that means, the, uh, the filaments will be or yarns will be at parallel unidirectional where the carbon filaments will be along the axis okay, parallel to the axis when it is made from drape spinning. So, it is called UDC, when it is uh, made from the film stacking UDC F and powder coating UDC P. And then we will uh, study their mechanical character characteristics and matrix distribution, Meta mechanical characteristics will be and using the flexural property interlaminar shear strength and matrix distribution will be done using the scanning electron microscope and micro computed tomography. This is the total experimental plan material the same material we will be using here the carbon uh, fiber 7 micron diameter and for drape spinning polypropylene fiber as a sheath we will be using on the carbon fiber for producing drape spun hybridian and uh, for uh, powder coating as uh, same powder coated coating uh, uh, principle we will be using with the cryogenically grounded ground uh, polypropylene powder and uh, film grade polypropylene granules were used to manufacture film of certain thickness okay, for film stacking method. So, hybrid yarn production here it is a drape yarn, a drape uh, 3 system is used here, carbon tone and drafting unit 1, the uh, polypropylene staple fibers are used here and it is getting opened here by using a cutting drum and the for core we will be using here the carbon, carbon toe and the drafting unit 2 is not used as a drafting uh, system here at the from the front roller it is just fed here and the fibers staple fibers are wrapped around the surface of the carbon toe and finally, the hybrid yarn is taken it is owned on this package. Okay. Let us see the process here. This is the drip spinning process to form the hybrid yarn. This is the carbon toe here it is going to the drafting unit 2 it is the front roller from the front roller it is used entering in the and finally, it is a wrapped here polypropylene wrapped hybrid yarn is and this is the sliver this is a sliver it is going to the drafting unit and finally, we get the hybrid yarn. So, these are the different parameters used and the this pictures we have already explained in detail the schematic of the spray coating where we get the uh, powder coated toe break. These are the parameters which have been used in the powder coating voltage uh, 40 volt we have used here 
conveying air pressure 1.5 bar, fluidizing pressure 0.5 bar, the distance of the gun from the toe 40 millimeter, toe velocity 3 meter per minute, oven temperature 190 to keep the flexibility intact, otherwise at 1, uh, 200 and 220 we have seen at that temperature flexibility reduces, ultimately that uh, finally we have to use this uh, powder coated uh, toe prick for, uh, for uh, weaving, dosing air pressure 0.4 bar and tension 160 centinewton. And for film stacking, this is the carbon toe, this is the blue color, it is carbon toe and alternatively the one carbon toe layer and one film layer we have used. And the consolidation method and mechanical characterization. So, this is the consolidation method means are here we have made the uh, composite okay. the uh, after wrapping a number of layer here in the compression molding machine is used with a breathing pressure of 8 bar, curing pressure of 10 bar and temperature of curing is 190 degree Celsius. And these are the molds, one is male female molds are the molds are there and this is pressed against each other in between that there is a toe preg is there. So, compression molding was used to consolidate the com composite. Okay. So, this we have the mold comprises of a female and a male part okay, and a cavity between them. So, toe preg was compressed at uh, 10 bar pressure for 10 minutes. The composite were then cooled at 100 degree Celsius without removal of uh, pressure. So, pressure was kept and final dimension of the composite was 20 millimeter in width, 160 millimeter in length and 3.2 millimeter approximately it is a plus minus 0.2 millimeter thickness. Okay. And uh, what we have done? We have prepared the unidirectional composite and these are the parameters of unidirectional composite. So, with PP fiber what we have used polypropylene fiber 2.5 denier polypropylene fiber, staple fiber we have used and as a matrix here and carbon uh, reinforcement for all three samples where carbon toe was used. So, and preformed structure is a drape span hybridian as we have seen here and then for stack making. So, stacking before consolidation where 8 layers were there with 1 14 turn 14 number of turns. So, this so there are turns we have seen this is a plate suppose and there is a turn 1 turn means 1 layer such 14 turns will be there. Okay, these are the 14 tons and such 8 layers will be there. Like 8 layers, then it is this total system, the total material is put under the compression molding and we get the compression molded composite. Okay. And as it is made from DREF, so that is why you DCD. Similarly, carbon to powder similarly uh, 8 uh, layer and 14 tons. So, UDC P, so unidirectional composite made from powder coating and for PP film, it is a one film we have taken, it is a 50 micron thickness with carbon toe is there and in this case here. 8 layer of 14 turn was there, but in between there were the films were there. Okay. So, 
UDC F and the testing what we have done for the three point bending testing okay, with uh, this uh, parameters where cross head speed is 5 millimeter per minute and at the same time it is a short beam test which is shown here short beam test. So, to get the flexural characteristics of the composites and uh, we have done a detailed study for all these uh, composites made from drip spun hybrid yarn from film stacking and powder uh, coating and we have compared their uh, result and that uh, those all these results we will discuss in the next class till then thank you.